Hello and welcome to this month's video podcast brought to you by AMSYS Training. As always, if you have any comments or suggestions, perhaps on future podcasts, please feel free to email your ideas to podcasts at amsys.co.uk. Today's subject will be an overview of Mac OS X servers Radius service. This podcast describes how to configure and use Radius or remote authentication dial in user service to keep your wireless network secure and to make sure it is used only by authorized users. Radius is a networking protocol that provides centralized access, authorization, and accounting management for computers to connect and use a network service. Mac OS X Server's Radius service is used to authorize open directory users and groups so they can access airport base stations on a network. By configuring Radius and open directory, you can control who has access to your wireless network. Radius works with open directory and password server to grant authorized users access to the network through an airport base station. Radius services were added and configured to support Apple's access points. Any Airport Extreme or Express is compatible. Just make sure that you use the latest Airport software for best performance. You can add up to 64 base stations in total to the Radius service. So let's first look at how you can configure the Radius service using Server Admin. Firstly, you will need to enable the Radius service. Connect to your server using Server Admin. And once you are connected, select your server and select the Settings tab. Click on the Services option and select the Radius checkbox to make the Radius server available for configuration. You can now click save to save your changes. Once this has saved, you can check that your server has the Radius service listed as available to configure. Note that at this point the service is available, but we have not yet configured the service to be started. Mac OS Server has a very useful configuration assistant which can be used to guide you through configuring the Radius service if this is the first time you have set up this service. Select Radius from your services list and then click the Overview tab. Then you can click Configure Radius service at the bottom of the screen. This will bring up the Setup Assistant for the Radius configuration. Once this is loaded, you'll be able to configure your Radius service. In the Radius server configuration certificate pane, you can either choose an existing certificate or choose to create a self-signed certificate. If you choose the latter, a message appears explaining self-signed certificates and warns you that these cannot be verified independently by clients. So for now, we select the default certificate and click continue. The assistant will now offer you a list of available airport base stations. So select the base station you wish to add to the Radius service. If this base station has an admin password, enter this in the base station password field and click add. Once this has been added, confirm that it's been selected as an added base station and click continue. In the Radius Allow Users pane, you can restrict user access to the base station. Select Restrict to members of a group, so only users of a specific group can access the base stations you have selected. Select the group of users who you wish to grant access to the base station. This will need to be previously set up in Workgroup Manager. So make sure you have fully planned your base station access and created the relevant Open Directory users and groups. 
So if we look at my workgroup manager, you can see that I have created a group called Radius Admin and I have added the relevant members to this group. So back in Server Admin in the Setup Assistant, you can click Continue. When you are happy, you have selected the correct access rights. Before your configuration is complete, you will see a setting confirmation pane. Check that all your settings are correct before you confirm the setup. You can always go back if you need to make any changes. If you are happy, you can click Continue. You can also print or save your Rages configuration settings if you wish. Once you click Close, your configuration will be saved and the Rages service will be turned on. So once your settings are saved, we can go back to server admin and you can verify that the service is now turned on. It will have a green light by the service. You can look at the base station tab of this Rages service to find out that the base stations you have selected have been added correctly. You have now successfully configured the Rages service and added an airport base station to this service. We will now look at how to connect to the airport base station from a client machine using an open directory user account. For this example we will use the Sandy Shores user which I added in Workgroup Manager and added this user to the Rages admin group. Scan for available wireless networks as usual and select the network name of your airport base station which you have configured for Radius authorization. Enter your open directory username and password. You can use your short name here as well. When a client attempts to access an airport base station, airport communicates with the Radius server using the extensible authentication protocol or EAP to authenticate and authorize the user. Users are given access to the network if their user credentials are valid and they are authorized to use the airport base station. If a user is not authorized, he or she cannot access the network through the airport base station. As an additional piece of information, the iPhone 2.0 firmware update and later updates add support for WPA2 Enterprise and 802.1x authentication for a secure wireless 128-bit encryption connection. We hope you enjoyed this month's podcast, demonstrating how simple Mac OS X Server makes using a Radius service. This podcast is an extension to wireless networking, which was overviewed on our previous Airport and Wireless Network Configuration podcast. If you would like to watch this previous wireless podcast, or any of our other podcasts, or you wish to learn more about Mac OS X, then please visit www.amsys.co.uk forward slash training. In partnership with Apple, we offer a number of training courses covering a wide range of areas in great detail.